Hey everyone, I'm Matthew McCullough. With the help of some of my colleagues here at GitHub, I wanted to take you on a tour through many of the great new features that we've been building. Many of these were made in India by our brilliant and talented team based there in partnership with hubbers from other countries around the world. Building software is a team sport, and it's getting even more collaborative every year. It's not just companies like GitHub that are coming together with teams across the world to build incredible things. Amazing collaborations and contributions from developers are happening every day in open source projects and in thousands of corporations. The classic days of offshore development centers and outsourcing are gone. Teams all around the world need the very best developers in the world to help them build their products. Whether you're in Miami or Montreal, Mumbai or Mombasa, if you have something to contribute, GitHub helps make that easy. This collaborative style of work is what GitHub was built for from the very ground up. Increasingly, we see agile teams come together, building software iteratively and deploying frequently. They're bringing value more quickly to customers. The most successful companies are adopting DevOps practices and tooling. But why? Not just because they're buzzwords, but in service of helping them ship more iteratively. Even with all that talk of flexibility, the way that these same teams plan the software deliverables is a very rigid process using tooling and issue tracking systems that trace their heritage back decades. That was a time when we built software very differently. And you neither want to build like a dinosaur or be using a dinosaur. We know that needs to change. Developers want to plan and track their work in the same way that they build software with flexible and lightweight processes that are built to adapt. But rather than talk about it, let's show you what we mean. Hey, Shilpa, can you show us a demo? Thank you. Hey, everyone. Have you ever had this really great idea, but the second you sit to put it down in writing, you realize that it's not quite there yet? So that's exactly what Discussions is meant for, to provide you with a space where you can discuss ideas um, with your teammates and bring them to a form that you're happy with before you actually start working on it. At that point, um, you can create an issue directly from your discussion so that you don't lose all of the context that's available in the original discussion. And when I create the new issue, you'll see that there's actually a new option here, which allows you to create a branch for this issue. This allows you to link a branch to um, the issue that uh, this change originated from. Um, so it's a really nice way for you to, um, you know, just trace everything back to the source of the original idea. And I'm sure, so once you've created this issue, you're going to want a place to track everything that you're working on, right? And that's exactly what Project Boards is meant for. So here's how you can just link an issue to an existing Project Board. And this is what the Project Boards look like. I'm not sure if you've seen this, but um, these are the new GitHub Project Boards and you'll see that you can actually view all the items in a table as well. You can always switch to the older view of viewing things in a Kanban board, but I personally really like the uh, tabular form. And you'll see that it's really easy to create custom fields. So these could be text, numbers, dates, whatever it is. And it's also very easy to create new custom views if you decide that you would rather group all the items on your board by a different field. So instead of looking at things by area, maybe you want to view things by status, right? So it's pretty straightforward um, to do that. And if you've ever actually managed a project, you'll know that there are a couple of tasks that are very repetitive, right? So. Um, to spare you the uh, you know um, horror of having to work on that, we actually um, have created uh, workflows which allow you to automate certain tasks. So when an issue or a pull request is closed, you can set um, the status to complete on the project board, for example. There's a couple of default workflows here, but you will soon have the ability to create and edit your own workflows as well. And I guess the last thing that I wanted to show you was um, creating your own charts. Uh, which is again, very straightforward. Um, I can click on a new chart and when I hit configure, I get to choose the layout that I'd like to see. So maybe I want to use a stack bar uh, graph and take a look at what everyone's working on 
and um, maybe the current status of those items, right? So it's that easy to create a new chart. So um, that's pretty much all I had for you. I hope you found this helpful. Back to you, Matthew. Thank you so much, Shilpa. As you saw in that demo, GitHub Discussions gives you a space to collaborate on ideas and helps you build communities inside your company. With our new planning and tracking tools in GitHub Issues, we let you track that work, break it down into steps that make sense for your development teams, and then categorize and assign it. It also gives you the traceability you need and offers stakeholders transparency, a window into the software development process. Now, knowing what to do is one thing, but having to build it is another. To do that in an increasing scale, you have to both onboard new developers into the team and make the developers you already work with more productive. How many of you started with a new company in the past 12 months? Do you remember what it was like the first time you joined a team? I know I do. There are so many things you have to do before you can write and commit your first line of code. And honestly, that's why you joined the company. In some companies, it can take weeks or days to get started. And here at GitHub, we're innovating to get the ramp up time for a new development environment down from days to less than 15 seconds. Now, sounds too good to be true, right? Rohit, do you want to show us how this is even possible? For the sake of the demo, we'll be using GitHub's own source code repository. This contains the code of everything that you see on github.com. So here we are in the GitHub slash GitHub repository. Now, bear in mind, it's a fairly large repository and when cloned on your uh, hard drive, it can take up to 22 GBs. So if I were to get started the traditional way of cloning it and then setting up the required dependencies, I might need to factor in about an hour or more to get started. The other alternative that I have to accelerate this is GitHub code spaces which is a dev box on the cloud and it can be configured to our requirements. So I have choices for the RAM, the cores, and the storage space that I can spin up on this code space. But for now, I'm going to go with the default option here. 32 cores and 64 gigs of RAM should be good. The code spaces can be interfaced with directly from the browser or through VS Code installed locally on your laptop. And once ready, and once you have connected to it, you have complete access to the full-blown VS Code experience with access to the marketplace and extensions. In fact, I've added the GitHub Copilot extension here so that it can help me write some code later on. In addition to this, you also get access to the complete terminal and all of your files checked out and your dependencies pre-installed. So this can help you accelerate the amount of time that it takes to get started on a project and bring it down to a matter of seconds. So now that we have our dev box ready, it's time to contribute back to this code base. So let's add a test case here so that whenever we are working with our APIs, if a default version is not mentioned, it returns a blank array. So to write this test case, I start off by writing the name of the test case and GitHub Copilot reads this, understands what I'm trying to do and provides a contextual suggestion. The suggestion offered here is pretty much what I want to do. It gives an empty array back and this is exactly what I wanted to implement so I can accept the suggestion by pressing tab and now it's ready to be committed back to the code base. Once I commit it, I can start off the code review process by opening up a pull request, and then we can take it from there. So there you have it. We have been able to check out a fairly large repository, get started, and contribute back to it with the help of uh, GitHub Code Spaces and GitHub Copilot, all in under two minutes. And with that, I want to hand this back to Matthew, and thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Rohit. Think about that for a moment. Even here at GitHub, for our main monorepo that's over 11 gigabytes in size with over 1 million commits, we can stand up a full clean developer instance in under 15 seconds. This doesn't just impact productivity for new developers, but it massively speeds up work for our existing developers who spend less time managing their development machine. Not only that, but it opens up new possibilities like creating a brand new development box just to review and test a pull request that someone has asked you to look at. It also makes it easier for other teams across the company to contribute. Pushing the boundaries even further, you saw how Copilot helps developers once they get into a fully set up development environment go faster with the aid of our AI coding assistant right there alongside them. When I talk with enterprise customers who have a very broad portfolio of projects, 
there's a tremendous value to storing that development environment configuration as code alongside the source. It makes being able to get a reproducible dev environment in seconds viable not just for the main branch, but for historic branches and tags too. It's far less time intensive to fix bugs or add new features into existing software when a working dev environment is just a click and seconds away. Codespaces helps companies more easily keep on top of their backlogs of work. When a bug comes up, create an environment and fix it. No need to wait for a large backlog to build up for a particular product before you can justify the overhead of resuming active development on it. Speaking of enterprise customers, everyone I talk with today is concerned about software supply chain security. And further, there's a direct correlation between the amount of code written and the number of security issues found. Writing secure software is just too hard. It begs for help. If, as industry analysts say, the world is going to double the amount of software created over the next five years, we need to make it vastly easier for teams to find and fix security vulnerabilities, prevent the most common forms of software supply chain attacks, and keep software dependencies up to date. Amit is going to show us the latest innovations in GitHub's advanced security tooling that helps address these needs. Over to you, Amit. We have GitHub Advanced Security enabled on our private repositories, but anyone can enable security analysis on public repositories for free. Just go to settings and turn it on there. I can get an overview of the security situation from the security tab in my repo. I have got Dependabot enabled, which will report on dependency vulnerabilities in my repo but it will also submit pull requests to fix those vulnerabilities. Here we can see depend about telling me about a number of vulnerabilities it has found. Here it is suggesting me we update the crossfish dependency to the latest version. Now this is a minor fix and it's already passed over CI tests run by action. So I'll approve the change. When we see all the tests passing, we can merge this change. Even our build processes can be kept up to date with Dependabot as it will let you know about new versions of actions that you might be calling. Back in the security tab, we have secret scanning enabled as well. We have no current alerts, but you can see in the past, one of our engineers committed a GitHub token. So we have revoked that and removed it from the code. We can drill into see more details if we need to as well. GitHub is able to detect over 70 different types of secrets out of the box and enterprises with GitHub advanced security can also configure their own. So that's known vulnerabilities and secrets taken care of. But what about the unknown vulnerabilities? With the code QL, we can scan our code base looking for the code that would introduce potential security issue. We can see an issue here, but now in this case, it's probably not a major exploit. But we don't want to forget about it if it's going to take a while to fix. So right from here, we can create a new issue and track the issue through until we have it resolved. Let's leave some more details and I'll mark it as a good first issue in case someone wants to pick it up quickly. We also get a deep link to the alert as well as task list to keep track of how we are going. And that deep link takes us through to the alert. Finally, we have seen the security tab for the repositories. But if we have GitHub Advanced Security enabled for your organization, you will see a security tab at the organization level as well. You can see the status of the security for all the repositories in your org and get a quick summary of how you are going. We can also see a security tab for individual teams. This will show the security status for all the repositories the team has admin access to. With that, I'll hand it back to you, Matthew. Thanks, Amit. Every tool you saw in today's demo are available now. Security is an activity and posture that the best developers are integrating directly into their DevOps pipelines. And those pipelines work best when they support your desired DevOps culture and process changes. GitHub Actions is our flexible compute engine built right into GitHub, allowing automation across every element of GitHub from CI and CD to code scanning. An actions automation can fire up when someone creates or comments on an issue, submits a new pull request, pushes a commit, or merges a branch. Anything that creates an event in GitHub can kick off an automation with actions, and you can even send webhooks into GitHub from external systems to trigger a workflow. We announced GitHub Actions just over two years ago. 
the community of developers right here in India and across the world have jumped on board. And today, GitHub Actions has the largest community in use of all CI CD providers, in no small part because building extensions are easy, reuse is literally a part of the design, building extensions to other systems is also easy, and Actions is the most open of all developer automation platforms. If you're not already using GitHub Actions as part of your development, then you really should take a look. Mohan is going to show us all how to get started. Mohan, take it away. Hi, I'm Mohan, a principal solutions engineer here at GitHub. I am currently in our repository looking at a pull request that was submitted by one of our engineers. You can see they've left some comments, um, any related issues, and an additional comment from my colleague Martin who confirms this all looks good. But most importantly, we've got all these checks. These are GitHub Actions and are workflows that run when a pull request is submitted. Given all the green check marks, it's clear that the change passes the tests. So I'm going to leave a comment and then I'm going to merge the pull request to complete the review into our main branch. When the change gets merged, our CSED automation will automatically kick in. We'll check everything again, and if all looks good, deploy the changes to staging. And in staging, I still have the option of running any DAST tools or any automations to verify if the, de the, the deployment looks okay and promote it to production. While all that is happening, let's take a look at another pull request. Now, this one is currently awaiting approval. The automated checks are verified and told me that things look okay. So using the power of GitHub's environments and environment approvals, I can now reuse all the logic that I've built to deploy to staging to deploy into production as soon as I approve. We get a, a full end-to-end -end traceability of who deployed, what was changed, why, along with all the artifacts that were deployed. So this means now, we can do full enterprise scale continuous deployment thanks to the power of GitHub Actions. That is a very quick introduction to GitHub Actions. Hope we found it useful. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Everything we've shown you today is available for customers who have GitHub Enterprise or have added GitHub Advanced Security. Lots of startups and growing companies prefer to take advantage of our cloud-hosted enterprise offerings. But we also work with customers who need to work inside firewalls and other protected environments. For those groups, every quarter, we take the functionality from our cloud-hosted GitHub platform and we bring that to our self-hosted on-premises environments. That's our quarterly release process of a product that we call GitHub Enterprise Server. To sum up, all the core features of GitHub are available free for teams of any size. GitHub is and always will be free for open source developers. So I encourage you, go get started now. It could be a new idea for a startup company. It could be a goal for making your existing company more efficient. It could be an idea for making your team more collaborative or a community that you want to create and grow. GitHub is here to help you plant those seeds and to help them grow. Enjoy today's sessions as we help you learn more about the ways that GitHub can contribute to your software development processes. I'm looking forward to hearing from you soon.